Aloha 4th grade. For the next three weeks, we will be doing an architecture relief piece based off the government buildings. Today we'll be learning about our state capital. For this assignment, our learning targets are to be able to share history of the capital building or details of other government buildings. Also to learn how to move from a photograph to a drawing. And then to ex execute a relief that references a government building that creates depth. Our vocabulary for this lesson includes architecture, which is art and science of designing buildings and other physical structures. Relief, which is a sculptural technique where the sculpted elements remain attached to a solid background of the same material. And depth, which is apparent distance from front to back or near to far in an artwork. Some fun facts of the state capitol is that it's a granite structure. It's also the third capital, and it's the tallest building in Madison. The first state capital, located at the site of the present building in Madison, Wisconsin, was started in the summer of 1837. Since this building was not ready in time, the first legislative session in Madison was held in the American Hotel, located at the north corner of East Washington Avenue and North Pickney Street. Later meetings of this session were held in the unfinished capital, but the cold weather and the condition of the building forced an adornment. The second state capital was born in confusion and died in a fire. The confusion started when the legislature decided that the old capital was no longer adequate for the needs of the growing state. In 1882, the constant expansion of state government made it necessary for two wings to be added. One of these collapsed during construction, killing four men. On February 27, 1904, the second Wisconsin state capitol, a building with a state-of-the-art firefighting system, was destroyed by fire. A gas jet in the closet on the second floor next to the assembly post office set fire to the woodwork at about 2.30 a.m. on February 27, 1904. Madison firefighters, with the help of two Milwaukee companies, fought the blaze for 18 hours. The governor personally directed the saving of documents, correspondence files, and the precious law library. Lost to the flames were the Grand Army records and the stuffed form of Old Abe, Wisconsin Civil War Eagle. After the second Madison Capitol building burned in 1904, Various plans were explored for the Capitol. In 1905, the Capitol Commission established a program for the new building, requiring it that it be in the form of a cross, with the four equal wings of the building radiating to the corners of the square. The current Capitol recently experienced a 14-year renovation and restoration project. The project was performed wing by wing as per the original construction of the Capitol. The renovation started during 1988 and was completed during 2002 at a cost of $158.8 million. The purpose of the project was to convert the Capitol into a modern working building while also restoring and preserving its original 1917 appearance. For this assignment, you can look at details of the Capitol or the Capitol building itself. You're also welcome to research other government buildings, whether national or international, to inspire your relief architecture sculpture. As you begin researching, you'll notice that government buildings have different types of columns. A column can be decorative, functional, or both. Today we'll be looking at the Greek types of columns, which include the Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. Doric is the earliest and most simple of the classical column styles developed in ancient Greece. They are found on many neoclassical public schools, libraries, and government buildings. The Lincoln Memorial, part of the public architecture of Washington, D.C., is a good example of how Doric columns can create a symbolic memorial to a fallen leader. More slender and more ornate than the earlier Doric style, an Ionic column is another of the Greek order. 
the volute or scroll shaped ornaments on the ionic capital at the top is a defining characteristic. The 1940s era Jefferson Memorial and other neoclassical architecture in Washington, D.C. was des designed with ionic columns to create a grand and classical entrance to this domed structure. The Corinthian style is the most lavish of the Greek orders. It is more complex and elaborate than the earlier Doric and Ionic styles. The capital, or top, of a Corinthian column has opulent ornamentation carved to resemble leaves and flowers. You'll find Corinthian columns on many important public and government buildings, like courthouses. The columns on the New York Stock Exchange building in New York City create a mighty Corinthian colonnade. Once you found your source material, you're going to go into sketches. You can create a new sketchbook or go into an existing one. And then what you're going to want to do is you are going to import your screenshot. And this screenshot can have already been cropped um, before you've brought it in, or you can crop it within sketches. So I'm finding the image that I would like to use. I have brought it in. I'm zooming in to be the size that I want it. And then I'm going to actually start with some basic lines that I see. So that's going to be the outlining of the building and also doing some details. So I begin sketching the outline of the building and I'm going to be using some different pen tools. I'm going to have to be using the eraser. I'm also going to be using different colors as I sketch out this building. I'm paying attention to simplifying some shapes and not doing very tight details. I'm also going to be coloring in certain sections, filling out different areas, and thinking about what type of cardboard I may need for this project. If you feel like you are almost done, make sure you're checking your work to see what this drawing looks like without that image. Once you feel like you are done, you will be turning in your straight drawing and the image with the drawing on top of it to canvas. Make sure you are labeling it correctly. Once you think your images are ready, make sure you export it and save to files. You are going to be labeling it last name, dash first name, dash, dash sketch, dash class code. Your second image will be last name, dash first name, dash sketch two, dash class code. It does not matter which one you label sketch and which one you label sketch two, as long as both of them are submitted to Canvas and labeled correctly. If labeled, don't forget to save to either Chrome or Downloads before uploading it to Canvas. Our timeline is as follows. Today you'll begin researching and sketching out your image. Once your sketch is completed, you're going to label your image last name, dash first name, dash sketch, dash class code, and turn it into Canvas. Here is your overall to-do list for this project. Please make sure you're using class time wisely. When you are finished with your sketch, please refer to the PowerPoint for resource videos, there are two.